so in the last episode we were able to uh, log out a user and also uh, conditionally rendered our links or buttons and so on now in this episode i want us to see how we can be able to actually log in a user so that will include performing a http request to our endpoint adding the user to the state and to the local storage so let's just dive right in uh, again i'll just uh, go to the auth context let me clear these we don't now need them okay we had already created a service right here called post request to perform our post request for the http request now uh, i'll go to the auth context and i'll create a function which will be so similar to the register user right here so right here let's go ahead and create a function called login user so i'll say const login user and uh, we set this to be equal to use callback hook and we invoke this uh, we will have a function to begin with and right here we also have the dependency array for our use callback now uh, the thing is right here we will also be having the login info login info so uh, actually i have remembered we are not handling the state for our login uh, we will be doing that in a few but we will be having login info in state so uh, it will be similar to our register info so let's create that piece of state so that it doesn't throw any error so right here we will be having instead of register info uh, we will be having login info and for login we will be having only the email and the password okay cool and i save we will be updating this state in a few but let, let us complete this uh, login user function just to avoid uh, confusion so login info contains email and password so right here we simply perform the http request like this one here so i will copy this and i'll go ahead and paste it here the base url here will be the same but now we will go to users a stroke login so right here we will say login login like that then this is complaining because we didn't include a sync here since it's an async action and we are using await uh, we include at the body here the login info so login info and uh, now that body will be received right here and sent to our backend okay okay cool so so far so good we are also going to handle the error uh, just like we did with our register right here uh, these functions are so similar but we need to to have the uh, login error state and the is loading state so let's add those two states uh, right here i'll just uh, copy these two copy and uh, let me add just after these to be more organized now in this instead of register we will be having login so i'll change everything here to login make sure to uh, include caps for these and this one is loading and this one uh, set is <laughs> is login loading and yeah now we can make use of them in our function so in our login so to begin with here let's go ahead and set is loading to true uh, before we perform the request after we perform the request we change the is loading status here set is uh, loading back to false again uh, let's clear the error when we uh, we are performing this request so if we had an error in state we should be able to create before we perform this request again so we clear the error by setting the login error to null and then uh, the other thing uh, remember this we will be using it on a form so we'll be having access to the event and we can prevent uh, the default so that this uh, action does not refresh our uh, page so e dot prevent default and we call that method like that cool and now uh, the other thing that we should do down here is to handle the error so if we have the error uh, we 
set the status here to error else we don't so right here uh, we will say if uh, response dot error exists so response uh, dot error exists let's go ahead and set uh, actually we should immediately return and we set our login error so set login error to our response okay and if this error does not exist so we will be able to proceed to the next line here uh, actually i like to include these just at the top here after we complete the request now if we don't have an error we can go ahead and set our user to response and also we should save the user to the local storage so right here i save the user to the local storage i'll say uh, local storage dot set item we set the key to user and right here we use json dot stringify so that we store the user as a json string right here we'll be having response okay so that is saving the user to the local storage then right here we will be able to return then uh, right here we will set the user to be our response okay so now we have created this login uh, user function we are able to uh, make a request to the backend if we have a user we set the user to local storage and also set the user to the state if we have an error we are setting the error there okay that is cool now uh, this login info we should be able to correctly update it uh, from our form uh, therefore uh, we will create a function here just like this one uh, that is optimized for us to update our login info okay so right here i'll just duplicate this one and uh, whatever i'll do is update login info login info we get the info there but we set login info here set login info to info okay now we should be able to pass this update login info together with the login info itself login error is loading and the login user right here uh, to our value so that we access all that in the login form so right here uh, we will be having the login user function login user we will be having the uh, login uh, error we'll be having the login info we'll be having uh, the update login info also we'll be having uh, is login loading okay so we export uh, all we add all this to our value now we go to our login form and we can be able to access them from here okay so right here uh, inside our login here we will be able to extract all our information from our auth context so i'll say const uh, we use these curly brackets we will access the login info then we will have update login info uh, actually i think we can just copy paste them here <laughs> so let me come here and copy all this instead of me typing now uh, we will be extracting all this from the value so right here we set them to be equal to uh, use context this is a, a hook from react make sure to auto import it or import it manually uh, we call it and we pass our auth context here auth uh, context i click it and it's also imported i save so now that we have all this we should be able to use them in this form the first thing that we should do is to update our uh, form controls here right here we will be firing the on change event so on change like that we'll be having another function having access to the event object and right here uh, what we will do we will just call our update login 
info and then we invoke this we pass an object then we correctly update the state by spreading the login info so i i spread the login info and also right here we update the email so i'll set the email to be e dot target dot target uh, and then here dot value cool uh, i save so let me make sure that we are calling the right function i don't know why it wasn't auto suggested there we go then we are updating the login info and uh, yeah so uh, let's first test if it's working so what i'll do i'll come to all the context and let's log the login info to the console so right here uh, we will have login info so that we don't do a lot of work and we are uh, having a lot of issues it's good to check with each retro progress so right here let's have login info okay i save so we should be able to update that field rs go to our app and uh, uh, the good thing we don't have any error we have the login info here let's type something here okay it's updating well but uh, for password not yet so let's hand off for password go back to login and uh, i will just copy this uh, particular event paste it here and uh, here we only update the password so password like that i save let's go ahead and test that one out so here password is updating now cool now we should be able to take that login info and send it to the uh, backend so for that case we will make use of this uh, the on submit event okay so uh, this button is already set to type submit so it will submit whenever we click it so right here we tap on the on uh, submit event and for this on submit event uh, whatever we will call is our login user function which is this one here okay we shouldn't be having logout so let me remove logout yeah there we go so uh, i call login user and i save now this should call our function here why is it uh, let's go to login user it should call this function and we should be able to uh, log in the user get back a response if we have an error we will show the error so right here let's try to log in uh, i'll say ciao at gmail.com i don't know if i remember the password but i can try login and look we are logged in logged in as ciao so if we check the state the user is there now and if i go to application here we have now the user so if i happen to log out you see we don't have the user and in our state the uh, user is cleared the user is null now cool we are able to log in but now we haven't handled the error here and the login status let's do that uh, that is uh, pretty easy so we are already bringing in the login error here and the is loading here so to begin with the error uh, we can come here we conditionally render this so right here uh, we check our login error object so if the login error uh, has an error we, sh we show that error so if this is true then we go ahead and say and end uh, let us have this right here uh, something is wrong uh, we shouldn't be having this there so we'll say if login error and end we have our alert in this i paste it Control v and save now if we have error we show the error so let's change this actually so i'll say 
login error and we show the message and I save cool so if I come back we don't have it but if we try to submit uh, an email that doesn't actually exist you can say ch at gmail.com uh, let me log in first in varied email on password cool it's working like magic so if we have the correct email so chao at gmail.com but we don't have the password or the password is wrong we still get invalid email or password so let's handle the loading status here uh, right here we conditionally render it just that so i'll say uh, is login uh, loading if that is so then uh, we can say getting you in getting you in then uh, else we show login there we go that is how we can do that now if i come back getting you in but we have an error let's log in as john so you can say john at gmail.com then right here we now include a password i don't know if i remember now i log in we successfully log in and here logged in as john and we can log out cool so our auth system is complete uh, we are able to uh, log in and conditionally render the routes depending whether we have a user or not we can log out we can register uh, which is really awesome now we can't go to chat if we are not logged in and this is awesome now the next thing that remains now that we have some users uh, to work with is to uh, start now uh, working on our chat uh, sending messages creating chats and so on so we will get to socket io after that so the next thing that we will do is to go back to our backend that is node.js and uh, express and create some apis for our messages so uh, i'll see you in the next one